Hello, I'm Katie Derham, and welcome to the Richard Burnett Historical Collection of Early Keyboard Instruments, which forms the core of what used to be the Finchcocks Musical Museum, and which is still the most exceptional resource and charity for anybody who's passionate about early keyboards. Hello, my name's Gary Branch, and I'm delighted to be here at the workshop of Lucy Code uh, on behalf of the Finchcocks charity to find out about how early keyboard instruments are maintained and restored. The Finchcox charity is delighted to sponsor apprentices to learn about the art of restoration and maintaining these wonderful instruments. One person I'll be introducing to you has been a recent apprentice of the Finchcox charity scheme and the other one is presently studying at the moment with Lucy here um, and who's been supported by the charity. I will be talking to Lucy Code herself about the work she does in the workshop here and introducing to you Cesar and Dan who have all been part or still part of the Finchcox charity scheme for supporting apprentice technicians. I'm currently standing in front of an instrument of 1781 that Lucy is presently restoring and I will be talking to her about all the different aspects of this work. On the top, you can see some of the work that is presently being undertaken by Dan. Dan is the present apprentice on the Finchcox Charity Scheme. So, hello Lucy, and we are standing in front of this instrument that I've just introduced people to. Could you tell us a little bit about the work you're undertaking on it? We've restored the instrument really from the bottom up. We've taken the soundboard out, we've um, done an awful lot of um, intricate action work to get it back to playing condition. But it had been neglected over the years, but it was still in very, very good original condition, which is lovely. Um, this is um, the baffle, which um, has been replicated from another instrument that had its original. Um, and Dan has made that, he copied it from photographs. Um, and we had all the witness marks here where no. the original was, so we knew exactly what was um, what amazing. it looked like and yes. all the sort of sizes. And very helpful. <laughs> and um, so this also had half of its dampers missing. Right. So this section is all new. Um, we've put new leather on the hammer covers yeah. and um, we've restored it. It's nearly finished now. We've got a bit of casework um, repairs to do um, and it's got its original soundboard, which is yeah. really lovely. So you, you spend as much time as possible trying to keep as much of the instrument as original as you possibly yes, can indeed. in restoration. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of conservation involved and obviously a lot of the techniques we used are thinking about the future again. Uh, yeah. So we'll be um, able to um, undo the piano if you like because it was glued with um, animal glue which is reversible yeah. so we have re-glued the soundboard with animal glue so in another 200 years it will be repairable again. Fantastic and of course this is why um, when we're training new technicians, new restorers, there is so much to learn. There is. This actually encompasses an awful lot of woodwork. I'd say it's predominantly 90% woodwork, right. um, but there are lots of other um, it, things that you have to do as well. There are um, a lot of metal work. We've got here, we've got some original levers that were missing. Uh, one was there, so we could copy the style. Um, so this basic um, metal work, if it's very involved and it's very specialist, of course we'd get somebody else involved to make something, but simple metal work we carry out in the workshop um, and also finishing techniques, um, we do those here too. So there's a lot of also um, yeah. materials and leathers that you've got to get right, you've got to get um, them all tanned in the same way as they yes. were originally so that they sound nice and don't react with the, with the metal. Um, so it, there's a lot of different yeah. sort of things involved. Um, and in obviously you have to be able to source all these materials as well. Yeah. That must obviously take a lot the, to get the, the connections with people who uh, provide such um, very specialist uh, materials for very you to Very much so. Um, what's been a great advantage lately is of course the internet. So you yes. can, um, I can get to, um, many, find out all sorts of um, people doing really interesting, involved, um, meticulous uh, providers um, that, and I can source a lot of materials uh, via the internet. So Lucy, restoring an instrument like this is an enormous amount to learn. 
where would somebody who was interested in a career in perhaps uh, early keyboard restoration go to find out how to do it? I mean, mm. we are here at the Finchcox Charity uh, supporting one or two young people at the moment and hoping to support mm. more in the future. But um, what, what routes could they go mm. and where well, do they look? It's very, very difficult because there are very few places now. Um, there's there's a, a, a college in Newark doing some training, um, but it's very reduced numbers. But the main place, which is the London, was the London College of Furniture, the Metropolitan University, has shut, which is a great shame. And that was the main place where people trained really in this sort of field, doing mm. harpsichord making um, and piano technology. And I started, I did the course on the piano technology and then sort of sidelined two square pianos after um, a lecture in, in the, on that modern course from um, an early restorer called Tim Hamilton and I went to work for him. So Tim gave me an apprenticeship for about three years and mm. he taught me how to do this. And I've helped other people and done some apprenticeships um, with many people actually that are in the field today still, which is lovely and um, busy giving some tuition to Dan. Um, as well and trying to sort of spread the word by helping as much as I can because there's nowhere else really. Mm. You have to really learn the trade through either trial and error and you don't really want to ruin these lovely instruments with, mm. with practising on them. Absolutely. So a little bit of tuition um, and guidance is a, is a, is a great start um, and um, so that's what's happening at the moment. Mm. So um, obviously, how important do you think organisations like the Finchcox Charity are in supporting you to enable people like Dan as Cesar yeah. to study with you? Well, it's absolutely crucial because they're paying Dan um, uh, for, to, be, uh, to enable him to work mm. here. I'm delighted to be able to help um, the charity by providing some... Uh, tuition, tuition, and the like. charity is delighted to team up with you because this mm. is enabling us to carry on being able to play mm. and make those instruments heard for people in the future and enable people to come and play our instruments. Mm. So thank you very much. Hello Dan. So here we are at one of the uh, workbenches in Lucy's workshop here. Could you tell me a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, currently we're just working on the stand. Um, some point in the past it had been uh, re-varnished in a kind of modern, horribly plastic finish. So we've had to totally strip that. And also someone's kindly cut off the bottoms. So we've had to reattach those back on. And eventually they'll be stained to match and then hopefully shellacked. And then yeah. in the future, I've never noticed it was ever gone. Brilliant. And I see in this other stand here, you've been doing, a, you've been using yeah. a lot of your new found woodworking skills. Yeah, of course. This is for the uh, pedal mechanism. Um, yeah, all that was totally missing, so we've had to yeah. kind of machine up another part and lay it back in. But yeah, hopefully once it's all been finished nicely, you'd never know. And do you get, um, uh, where do you get the information as to how to do it? Do you, do you have uh, in photographs of other complete instruments or do you actually got original drawings or whatever? Yeah, you, it's quite, you... yeah, it's a bit of uh, investigation work, I think. Yes. Um, obviously it's great, Lucy has a big collection of um, photographs from different instruments and collections so um, yeah we just kind of work from those and try and make up some technical drawings mm. so we can kind of get a rough idea of what it's going to look like and then so yeah, the work is there, not really. it's not just the physical work of the craft but also there is quite a bit of academic research goes into working in this sort of field yeah of course I mean um, yeah there's a lot of historical kind of woodworking techniques as well which I suppose a lot of people don't teach anymore in restoration of even the stands and mm. things, you're actually going to have to look back into how these things were made in the past. And um, a workshop like this, you're actually studying how to, to restore in the way that they were made. Is that very... Yeah, it's totally. I mean, um, obviously on my college course, we do quite a lot of modern techniques as well as kind of traditional handcrafts with mm -hmm. planes and chisels and things. But um, yeah, it's definitely a lot of personal research as well, trying to find books and articles dating back to the 18th, early 9th century about how they might have refinished mm. wood or that sort And of we can see from the tools behind you that a lot of them are very old and probably over 100 <laughs> years themselves, just yeah, the tools. It's yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great working here with all these, um, yeah, like you said, all these old tools, which maybe is quite hard to find nowadays, I think, especially in good condition as well. Yeah. 
Although, of course, we've got all the facility of modern power tools today, in a workshop like this, restoring these types of instruments, we have to use all the original tools very much that people would have used 100, 200 years ago. Yeah, right. I mean, ha yeah, a lot of hand tools haven't changed that much. I mean, we do try to keep the use of modern uh, machinery down to minimum to kind of make it authentic as possible. But um, yeah, there's obviously an element of making it economically viable as well to kind of speed up the process a bit. I think that's the main difference really. Dan, on that basis, how did you find that the uh, Finchcox charity uh, sponsorship has benefited you? Yeah, I think it's really helped me and um, facilitate me to come and train with mm. Lucy. Um, and hopefully in the future, I'll be working with uh, Andrew Woodison to kind of learn to maintain and make harps course, which would be brilliant. Um, so, yeah, not just, but you'll be able to not just do pianos, but you'll be able to do harpsichords and clavichords and all the wealth of early instruments. Yeah, I think it'd be great to try and train with as many people as possible um, while I still can. And obviously I think Finchcox is a great avenue to help me do that, I think. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks. Dan. Hello, Cesar. It's lovely to see you again. Yeah. Normally we're at uh, the home of the Finchcox Charity and the Richard Burnett Collection. Here we are at Lucy Coe's workshop. Tell me a little bit about your journey uh, with early keyboard instruments. Yes, I started about five years ago mm -hmm. um, and it was very difficult to find a, a place to study. Actually, I don't think there's any place uh, at the moment with a program. So uh, I was very lucky to find um, Lucy Coates uh, on one side, she, she invited me to spend more time than just one day to look what it is this work because usually you want to first to see is this the right thing for me. So um, and, and also I was lucky enough to find the Finchcox, Finchcox charity because they provided uh, support, um, not only financial but also uh, training. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the opportunity in these two places, uh, this workshop and the Finch Charity, to round, uh, our, uh, to have an understanding and a practical approach towards mm. the maintenance and repair of early keyboards. Yes, because it's such a, a wide field. It goes from spinets and harpsichords of the 17th and 18th century right through to almost modern grand pianos with uh, instruments of the late 19th century. So, you know, it's uh, a very big field to study. It is very wide, not only because in, in terms of the different instruments, mm -hmm. uh, as, as you said, there are uh, different uh, periods and different instruments, uh, but also you need to, to learn about history, of course, you need to know about music, uh, you learn about uh, metals, leather, uh, different uh, materials, uh, you learn about many science because you have tensions of the strings mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's a huge area of undertaking isn't it it's it's huge but i i think uh, you, you you can enjoy if you're a, a person who are curious you have a natural curiosity towards artifacts or art uh, then it, it gives you the opportunity to combine all this knowledge that you may have mm -hmm. from school I say, why the trigonometry <laughs> was useful? Why I was taught that? And then you come here and you see that you have to work with angles mm. and uh, and other mathematical or physical uh, phenomena. Yeah, fantastic. I know that one of the things that you have specialized in recently is um, stringing. And Lucy has been restoring this instrument as she discussed earlier. And I believe you've worked somewhat on the strings on this instrument. Yes, strings is, is to me was is a fascinating uh, area because it, uh, when, when a string breaks, uh, there could be different possibilities. Uh, maybe the string was calculated uh, wrongly. Maybe the material was defective. Maybe we just put too much tension by mistake. So I wanted to really go into that why uh, mm. th that could happen. Because restorers in the past may not always have got it right because they still may be 100 years after the instrument was built. So quite often you find incorrect materials that people have put on these instruments for easy restoration, but not obviously sympathetic restoration. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to try to say, oh, well, I, I've seen this in another piano, I will do the same here, and, and it may not work. So 
it, it's a very delicate uh, area of the of the restoration yeah and so to the future how do you see your career in uh, early keyboard restoration developing well i I, I, I became so passionately about this that I decided to start a degree in physics um, mm -hmm. to understand uh, and to have a scientific approach. I became so passionately about this that I decided to start a degree in physics. So I, I've taken an approach, a scientific and a bit academic approach towards that, but uh, also I'm, I'm, I'm grounded in, in, in practice and in experience. We know you can play, we've heard you play, so that goes back to the fact that you've still got the creative side of the music in you as well. Yes, all, all that started because I wanted to play an instrument yeah. and the instrument I got um, needed repair. <laughs> and then I found out, oh, well, I can do that and then I can yeah. do more. But uh, and then I needed more information. So that's where I start to address other restorers to find out, oh, how do you do this? So all this started by that. So yes. Uh, let's say the ultimate ultimate goal for this instrument is to be played and enjoyed by uh, everybody yes yeah, absolutely well says i thank you very much for talking to me as our first of our next generation of restorers at the finch cox charity i have helped thank you you're welcome thank you Okay, earlier we were talking about stringing a, a square piano, and um, this is the this is the string winder that we use for making bass strings. Um, and Dan's going to make a, a. I'm just going to show him how to make the bass string uh, for this piano. Um, so it's going to spin a cover wire over a core wire, and um, this is the process um, that we use. So, Dan, have a have a go, yeah, yeah. and then. Um, yeah, try and do rest it like that. that I, yeah. And then keep it tight out. Yeah, and then I'll just start this off on a sort of slow basis, but that's it. Yeah, it's so got to get on that right little there, ledge. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Is that fast enough? I can do a bit faster if you like. Okay. And just feed the wire through. Well, on behalf of the Finch Cox Charity, I'd like to thank you all for a fantastic day here with you. Thank you, Lucy, for opening your workshop for yeah. us, and to Dan and Cesar for introducing us to what you've been doing and studying over the past few years. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. If you'd like to find out more about the charity and the workshops and the events that take place here, then please do so. If you'd like to support, we'd like you to do that as well. Go to the comments section beneath this film or go and visit the Finchcocks charity website.